All right, um, today I'm somewhat blessed listening to my father, Apostle Alonor Sai teaching. It blessed my life so much, and I decided to share it with you, and I hope this will bless your life too. Okay, over to you, sir. First of all, you need to find which areas of the flesh easily bind you. When you notice that someone, if someone insults you, you must, you can't hold it. Then there's a stronghold of the flesh in that area. Oh my. In order for you to defeat the flesh, you must develop intelligence that will make you understand the way the flesh uniquely operates in your own vessel. Are you with me? For some, when they behold a fair, every fair lady is a challenge to them. And you notice that if a fair lady passes, your blood pressure will go up. And that's the unique... That's the unique expression of the flesh in your own vessel. When you notice the strongholds of the flesh, you need to be very intelligent. You need to be a very good student of the processes of God in your own life in order for you to be an accurate believer. I, you see, I always, I always, and for every, depending on the family you came from, depending on whether you were first, second, third born, or last born, they are, I can describe your flesh challenge. Those of us that were not senior, we were towards the end. If people get angry, they beat us. If, and when we get angry too, they still beat us. <laughs> because of that, I, I found out how to lie. The type of lies that is in the textbook. So the only way of surviving, because the, the, every, we are always wrong. We are always <laughs> so a dimension of flesh developed for safety. The reason for which this flesh was coming was noble. It was to provide safety. And as I was moving in that lie, I became so skillful that one day I sent my father on April fool. And no, I'm not, this is, I sent him to modern market. It's in this town. After, yes, I sent him to modern market. He came out, when he came back, he almost burned the entire house. Do you know I was 12 years old, old then? I was skiff. So that aspect of flesh, because I was towards the last, that aspect of flesh had developed. What, what flesh? I saw a lady the other day, I think she like 14 years ago, they were scolding her. And all of her flesh was educated. She knows how to insult you with her eyes. She can insult your grandfather with her nose. She can do the nose. That's educated flesh. You need to find out which aspect of your flesh have been educated. That's the aspect you need most for survivor. And then take a, a jack saw. You have to do it yourself as a sign that you don't want to walk according to the flesh. So I had to lose my lying edge, which was my salvation. May the Lord give you understanding. I was from a very strong Christian background so our own kind of sin is not fornication because my mom was too strong you can't you know you can't know so that's not the, but they couldn't decode lying they could decode fornication that these are signs to fornication these are mm, these are signs so that aspect was brittle but they did not have the detector for lies so lying prosper and i was give you don't understand it took jehovah jehovah God that came and scooped out. Oh, you don't understand this. You don't know how long I labored. I labored to lose that hand. That it was a cutting edge hand. But I had to lose the hand so that I would not walk by the flesh. Because that's not the way of such men in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. 
I know you are laughing at me. The reason is because you are not the one on the spotlight. If we check your own life, you will see that you have many hands. Me is, is one, one projection. Maybe you have lump, a lump that has become an engineering tool here. Yes. <laughs> but our way in Christ is not to walk in the flesh, so you will need to take the jack saw and you cut that line. What it means is every time I lied, the Holy Ghost will remind me. Then I will go back and say, you know, after, when I, I promised the Holy Spirit I won't lie again, then I lied two times. Then I came back and said, I won't lie again! Then it became plenty. Then I now realized that I didn't have the ability, the authority to actually say, I will not lie again. So I went back to the Holy Ghost and said, can you help me that's the prayer of the man that wants to activate the law of the spirit of life. That man has come to an understanding of the fact that he cannot conquer the flesh. So he goes to the Holy Ghost to seek help. And he keeps seeking help perpetually until he sees that the Holy Spirit has registered victory. Now, many believers these days don't believe that flesh is as terrible as God sees it. Are you with me? You are not with me. Now, I and Pastor Dan, we've been discussing, evaluating our lives, discussing, checking this ministry, our service to the Lord, our service to the people, trying to find out if there are areas, you know, that we have not been doing very well. And such areas will require new lines of grace. You know, people don't check again. Let me tell you what will happen. You can be a master of flesh and you don't consider that flesh is an enemy to spirit life. Are you here? Right. So that line thing I was saying, you will need to fight it consciously. Because if I did not fight it consciously, and don't get me wrong, oh, my axe is still waiting, just in case. Eh? Okay. Just in case the thing. That's how you will wait with an axe. You need to love righteousness and hate wickedness. That's the formula. Now, if I didn't consider flesh to be as terrible as God sees it and I left that thing do you know that it will grow with me in ministry we are not aware now we are not aware it will, and then when I become an intercontinental minister you will notice that I am a liar so there is a fineness of the grace of God that will be obscured in my life because there is something I did not deal with. Oh, you are not with me. Oh, you have pride. Pride is flesh. Is is the occupation of a fallen man. That state of thinking that you are sufficient in yourself is the disposition of the fallen man. Because in Christ Jesus, we are insufficient. He is our sufficiency. But the fallen man believes he is in charge. And it is possible for you to give your life to Christ and you're the minister of the gospel, but pride everywhere. You did not cut off, you did not use the chainsaw to administer a deliberate attack on that pride, that fallen nature that was seeking to find a permanent place in your expression. Then you will grow like that. And in ministry, that pride is there. Meanwhile, you are a heavy man of God, but that limitation is still there. Have you heard of preachers that sleep with people's wives? That work of the flesh was, was active. Do you understand? And they were growing with it. When they commit a blunder, they come and say, hey, Oh, let not your spirit go from me. Hallelujah. Then many years later, 
a woman walked into the office of a man of God. He said, God, you will know if the baptism of lust to us. And he's a big man. You know what? You are shaking your head because he's not good. Huh? He allowed it grow until old age. If you don't deal with the booster stations of flesh now, when you become a grown-up woman and you are supposed to bring order, love to the family, you are going to be the terminal for crisis, the terminal through which unrest will invade the entire civilization. It is because what? You didn't use the saw. The first thing that we need to achieve in this our lecture is to find out your own booster stations of flesh. Write it first. In all sincerity, this, this Bible study tonight is, is called Naked Bible Study. The reason why I named it like that is that you need to be sincere today. If you are sincere, deliverance will come. Hallelujah. You see, the amen is going. I know, I know this situation. A mighty prophet, some of us read these books, mighty prophet, his secretary, years after the prophet died, now wrote a book. That he knows the prophet. He knows when the prophet is under the prophetic anointing. He also knows the prophet when he's under the influence of a foul spirit. That there were two spirits that operated in that man. Oh! Okay. Since it's surprising to you, I will shut down. You will use 10 years to learn this thing I want to tell you today. I'm saying that a renowned prophet, there were times when it was the Holy Ghost that was operating. This is the secretary. And times when it was a fast spirit. And the man knew. So when it is a fast spirit, he switches off. When it is the Holy Ghost, the, this prophet can come to work and he knows everything that happened in his absence. He will know. He will know. He will know. He, he, he was, he, he, oh my God. He was a luminary. But you see, there were several teachings he began to teach before he died that generated a sect in the body of Christ till today. And that his secretary actually revealed that it was that second spirit that was responsible for those teachings. One day, after a mighty miracle service, he had ministered to, I mean, laid hands on like 1,500 people and he was tired. Then he said, Kai, this prophetic ministry is not good. It's the teaching ministry that is better. So he stopped prophetic ministry, started the teaching ministry. And the thing about the offices we are assigned to, all right, God gives us authority and he gives us capacity to be accurate within the offices that were located. As long as I remain in my calling. My calling, oh my. No need for me to advertise myself. Let me. I know my calling. If I am there, I can't be wrong. But if I go and maybe Pastor Dan is doing something so wonderful. And I'm trying to also be wonderful. And I try to do the things that Pastor Dan is doing. The spirit of error because of that desire of the flesh. Is going to take advantage of my life. 